Hello everyone, it's Mary. Welcome back to the channel. I'm not going to spend a lot of time gabbing. I will let you know that today's video is still not sponsored. <laughs> but there is hope on the horizon, folks, and I'm very excited about it. We'll see. Stay tuned. Um, but, however, we are going to talk about some of those items that we see out in the crafty world that seem to be a little overpriced. And so I wanted to find alternatives that if you didn't want to spend the extra cost for that, maybe this could help you out and you still get the same effect from the product. Um, by all means, spend your money how you want to. This is definitely not a I tell you how to do it kind of channel. This is just options for you to check out and see if there's something out there that might work just as well. So let's get into our first product to look at. Okay, first up, don't get too excited. <laughs> I was looking for new cardstock because the accent opaque that I screamed from the rooftops about is seemingly not available for purchase. So there's certain weights that are, and I'll put those below. But I got this and I thought I read the GSM correctly. It says 110 pound cardstock. It is way super thin, not what I needed. So we're back to the drawing board. If you know a very cost effective, affordable way to get cardstock that's heavyweight and does all the things for us, please put it in the comments. I would appreciate it. All right, while that hunt is still on, let's go to this next piece. So you might have seen some of these sort of silicone or rubber mats floating around in certain craft areas or craft companies. And I found these and they're pretty flexible, pretty pliable, but they do all the things that I would want them to do. They're about seven inches across in diameter. And I love that the whole point of one of these things, you can put your, uh, your paintbrushes on it, you can use this for your ink pad. I'm gonna show you right here how I keep my ink pad from moving around on my glass mat surface. So if, as you can see, once it's on the glass mat, you really cannot get it to stay still so that I can get some good ink uh, on my brush. So when I do this, boom, it does not move at all. I think it's the grooves in this little piece here. Now I'm going to put the prices as of shooting this video up on the screen so you can see uh, the comparison sort of. Now I definitely think this is worth getting it. You can keep one in the kitchen to open up jars and put hot stuff on it. You can keep one here in your craft space. I really loved it. Um, and I'm going to show you later on, actually I did have to use it to open up a glue bottle. So yeah, so I love these things. I think they're great. Um, if you do have them from the craft company, I'm sure they, they work fine. Not sure if they're as flexible though to be able to do some of these other tips with it, but you can heat on it. Really great little tool for your craft space. So that's a thumbs up for me. I recommend these and they're more affordable. Okay, let's go on to this new tool on the craft scene that looks like an air hockey puck. And it like, is supposed to give even pressure over your stampin' tool. I don't own one, but I've seen it and I definitely can see how it could work, especially if you don't have a lot of strength in your hands or your grip. Um, so I'm gonna show you, I had this Arteza, just a dry erase marker laying around. So if you have one of those, you could pick those up super cheap. I'll link some from Amazon and it's just essentially the same thing. Now don't be fooled, I'm using watercolor cardstock to do this demonstration, which which is not smart <laughs> because you're not gonna get a great impression the first time anyway. So what I do is I switch to just a regular card stack just to show you that first impression. But if you do need a tool like this to help you add some pressure, even pressure across, then I would say you don't have to spend a lot of money for that. You could just get something cheap or even make your own. I've definitely seen fellow crafters doing that. So you can take to Pinterest and see what you can find, but I had this literally in my house. So I was like, oh, let me try it instead of, you know, the old CPR method that I used to do. <laughs> so, all right, so that's a thumbs up to save you some money. Now this one I was so excited about because I see these on multiple craft websites and they are, I got these from Amazon and they, again, price difference on the screen or price comparison. 
I have to say, they're a handy little tool. I did not think it was going to be that great when I first got it because I was like, why is everyone raving about these? But the inside silicone rubber pieces are flexible so you can put different size items in there. So they are, it's really cool actually, the very, very tiny openings between the, uh, of the floor, I guess they would be like flower petals. You can put tiny brushes in there. So I'm going to show you a few different things. But here I just have some blending brushes lined up. There's 10, they fit 10 to a pack, but then on the sides of that, I can shove other things and I can just keep this nice and neat on the side of my desk. If you don't have a lot of wall storage, but you do have some desk storage, highly recommend this. This is a great little tool here. I even put some pliers in there. So I was just shoving all the things in there, but you can see right this little small tiny areas, you can put so many things to fit. So I was very pleased with this. I thought that was cool. What else can I do with this? Oh, and it's really sturdy too. Like the stuff does not fly out. Another really great ad. And this one from Amazon comes in multiple colors, I believe. So again, all that stuff is linked below if you want to see it for yourself. I wanted to try other brushes, bigger handles. Did that work? Yes, it did. And then I got to thinking, if you're working on a project and you just need a certain set of markers that you want to keep out, but they keep rolling all over your desk, this is a great idea. Or you can just take those 10 markers or whatever they are down to the couch or the dining room table or whatever. So I am a huge fan of those. I think they're great. Highly recommend. All right. So this was another one that mm, good, not great. And so it's not great because it's not what I wanted it for. So I had asked a long time ago about any ideas besides the regular Spectrum Noir marker holders that I have to try to save money. I thought these were going to be big enough because this is this was like $7, I think, for 96 markers. Only problem was I can't fit my markers in it. <laughs> it's too small. I don't know. I guess maybe I didn't see the measurements of each of the little squares. However, this is a great storage for, look at me, I'm trying. It's not working. It's a no-go for that. But it does work for thinner markers. So here I have my Arteza water brush pens. They fit nicely. If you want to keep all your stuff out on the desk, you can also um, turn it on its side. So that's really good and they didn't fall out. So it's definitely not a terrible, I mean, I really did like it for its purpose. But for the purpose I'm looking for, not so much. So I also put some gel pens in there. You know, it's good. It's really good. You know, you can keep your colored pencils there right out and ready to use. But I still kept on the hunt for something for markers. And you all do not disappoint. Our fellow crafty friend Shelly sent me an email and she shared with me what she does for her marker storage. Now I'm showing you a few pictures. She sent these to me. I have her permission to share with you. And she has this beautiful box here. And these are from, I want to say like the hardware store where like lights, they're like some sort of light fixture. What you do is you align them inside your box. You can do them at the bottom to hold them steady and more so at the top. And then you can just put your markers all in there. You may or may not have seen that out on YouTube land. So if you have not, I wanted to make sure I shared it. And thank you so much to Shelly for sending me this message. Just, I really appreciate you. And I think that's a fantastic idea to save so much money because those light fixture thingies are really kind of cheap. Okay, this next hack money savings comes to you from Katya Kalanine. Her channel will be linked below. You got to check her out. She comes up with the greatest stuff. So she introduced me to this trickle, trickle, <laughs> triple thick deco art. We'll get back to that in a second. And these little precision tipped little glue or whatever kind of holders. Now I'm going to put glue in one of them. I'm going to put this triple thick glaze in another. But here I had to use my little silicone thing to help me open up this glue bottle. So this is glue I've had forever. It's Cosmic Shimmer. I never use it because the nozzle is just too thick. And so I thought, well, let me pick up a pack of these little thin nozzle ones and then I can transfer it in and see if it'll work out. Now it's great that I'm putting this in here. I'm using it today. But I want to tell you, I waited an entire day to come back and try to see if it got clogged or not, and it did not. So you affixed your little top, and you put this little silicone thing right on the tip of it so that it keeps it from drying out. And I am here to tell you this is that when I show you what I'm going to use on a card real quick, um, not this blue one, but like a 
finish card. And the, here's, I'm showing you how it comes out of the nozzle. But it is very precise, very thin. I loved it. But the greatest thing was I closed up the top, left it for an entire day, 24 hours, with the little silicone thing on top. It did not dry out. That is huge. So right here, this is 24 hours later, and I am going to affix this card panel right to this base. So I already put the glue on it, and then I'm just going to put that right down on my base. Very, very happy about that because normally I have to keep a pin in these things, and I did not. That little silicone thing worked really well. So, yay! So that works, and I have extra bottles for the next 55 years. <laughs> Okay, next tip. Another one coming from a subscriber. Am I offering any original value today? Probably not, but it doesn't matter. Sharing is caring. This right here is, I am so sorry, I did not write your name down when you told me this little hack, but if you don't wanna get your fingers all kinds of powdery, or if your bag is just dying and there's only a little bit left, you can fold the bag and use a paper or a binder clip to keep your fingers off of it and it's brilliant. It's a short hack, wanted to throw it in there, but hello, love it, had to share it. And don't forget, you can go bigger on the binder clip if you want. All right, next one, let's go back to this Deco Art Triple Thick Glaze. Now, the great thing about this is it is extremely comparable to these three items here, and it is a lot more bang for your buck. So again, I'll put those prices up there, and I'm going to show you a full comparison of the, the four of these. Now, I cannot believe I did not have any glossy accents on Stash. I really can't. I'm shocked. Um, but one of the things that Katya advises is if your glossy accent is kind of turning a little bit, I don't know if you've seen that it can turn a little yellow, uh, you can add a little bit of shimmer spritz to it to change up the color, and you can get a different color for your accent. So I, that's something, check out her video. She says it better, way better <laughs> than me. But I have my four pieces here. Now I am going to transfer my thick glaze from that big bottle into a smaller bottle, just like I did with the glue. But here are the four I'm gonna be trying out. The Nouveau Glaze, um, this one surprise, I forget what company that's from. I have the Spectrum Noir, and then I have this uh, Deco Art. So I'm just filling that up there. I didn't need to use a funnel. I didn't have a funnel that size, I don't think. It probably came with the bottle, the bag of bottles. I just didn't look. But let's get to business here, okay? So I have it full. Don't forget to label your stuff. I have a little label maker off to the side. I'm putting some labels on there because I will get all this mixed up. Let's start with the deco art. I want to show you when you first squeeze it out, you're going to get a little bubbles. No worries. Just keep going. And I'm going to show you this is the only, really, I think this might be a testament to two things. One, the bottles, these little mini precision bottles are fantastic but the bang for your buck that's kind of what i'm trying to share here with you is they all three out of the four work pretty much the same way but it's how much are you getting for how much are you paying okay so that's what i want you to keep in mind so right here i'm just showing you you could draw with this little nozzle it's fantastic i was just having a field day on some of my cards, I like to put little rain streams, you know, instead of rain dots. And so I just wanted to see if I can get those really thin on there. So that was great. And then I'm just using my um, metallic marker here, scrapbook.com. Those are awesome. Side note, not part of this video, but those are great. Now I'm going to pull out the Nouveau Crystal Glaze. Now I love the consistency of the Crystal Glaze. I think it is fantastic especially if you're trying to fill up larger images it fills in beautifully because it's a little more on the watery side but not too watery it will fill in your image almost on its own it's not clumpy or thick where you have to kind of move it around to make it work now this right here this one is probably my least favorite this is I will I put it on the screen or it's I forget really forget where I got this but it is um, it's good for some things I think I liked the dots the way they came out but I find when I'm trying to fill up images it's clumpy and it's really it's not smooth it doesn't work it doesn't settle itself on its own and then lastly the spectrum noir glaze I thought this was pretty good but you can see the difference in the precision, right? So that bottle is amazing. So what I'm gonna do is leave this overnight and we're gonna come back by the power of video and YouTube, you're gonna see them all dried. 
um, and I'm going to show you up close what they look like. So here it is dried 24 hours later. They don't take that long to dry, but the circles on the top I was disappointed with. Uh, with that precision stuff I, I really was because I wanted those tiny tiny dots the tiny tiny ones were good the other ones not so much but the dots of the rest of the stuff came out pretty nice so I was very happy with that um, I thought the sheen on the Spectrum Noir was great as well as the Nouveau Glaze and the Deco Art but this is really hard to tell just from a brown piece of cardstock so what I'm going to do next is show you on you know, some actual images of cards. So here I'm outlining or filling in the word thanks. And I recommend if you have a thinner die cut like this, you use something like this precision bottle. So I am pushing those hard. I think this was fantastic. Again, I had filled these one day, used them, and then waited 24 hours with the silicone little cap to make sure they didn't clog. And they did not. So that was amazing. So I'm going to fill that in and then I'm going to fill in the bottom four of these balloons with the four different glaze that we have. Okay. So again, I apologize for not having crystal glaze, but I'm going to guess because crystal glaze bottles are not that big. You have to take into consideration the price comparison on your own when you're purchasing, but I think it is probably pretty comparable to the Spectrum Noir and the crystal, the Nouveau crystal glaze. Now this third one right here, not a fan. And you'll see in a second when I show you them dried. The other three dried with a nice smooth sheen right over the top of it. And I thought they were really, really good. Going down and filling in itself, the two that performed the best were the Deco Art and the Nouveau Crystal Glaze. So those two were the easiest to fill themselves, if that makes any sense, sort of settling. All right, so now let's take a look at those all dried. This was probably a couple hours later, maybe maybe two or three hours later I came back up. But you see those three and then that one light pink one is really kind of bumpy and I did not appreciate that <laughs> at all. All right, so that is the comparison of that. I hope that was helpful. I'm gonna show you the dried thanks here next. And I, yeah, so this was a lot of fun to check these out. Thank you to the subscribers that reach out to me and share your, your hacks. Those of you that put your favorite tips and tricks in the comment section, as well as Katia Kalanine for sending me these great money savings tips to share with you as well. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. Everything will be linked below. If you wanna check it out uh, at Closer Review, you'll find those links right below, as well as my Linktree link. Now what that is, is it's a place for you to click one stop and you get to see all the other places that we can connect. You can click that as well. And if you want to join my email list, I'd love to have you. I send out freebies all the time, as well as any deals I see that pop up um, or any news that I just wanna share with all of you. So I'd love for you to do that. Click that link as well to join my newsletter, my email listing, and we can connect in that way also. I will see you all in the comments down below and in the next video. Bye-bye.